Hi, I'm Liv and welcome to the Book Nook. Today I am going to go over my cosy reading night TBR. Hashtag cosy reading night. So how do you do like hashtag, hash, hash. I should really try not to be cool. Should really. This is going well already. I should really not try to be cool. So I'm very, very excited to be properly joining in with my first cosy reading night. So the one in February I sort of half joined in, but I think I didn't get home till about like eight o'clock and I was like, oh, 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 you're having fun. Oh, I'll join in, blankets. The first one completely passed me by, but it's a wonderful idea. Um, if you want to know a bit more about it, if you go to Lauren and the Books channel, which I will link down below, <laughs> Still doesn't get old saying that. If you want to find out a bit more about Cozy Reading Night, it's an event run by Lauren over at Lauren and the Books, whose channel I will link down below. I will link the Cozy Reading Night announcement video for this next coming Cozy Reading Night. So it's an event that she runs. This will be the third one. And basically it's between seven and 10 on whatever day has been picked for the Cozy Reading Night. You just bundle yourself up under blankets with lots of snacks and candles and don't put the candles on the blanket that would be a bad idea maybe just put them like adjacent blanket adjacent candles is a better idea and lots of good books and then we tweet about it and we instagram about it and we all have a lovely lovely time so i have picked my books for cozy reading night now because i haven't done one properly before and i think the last one i was i just started reading whatever i was reading whereas this time i want to use it as an opportunity to read some stuff that i've been meaning to get around to reading so the first two that I'm going to read, and I think they will be the first two, and I will, will crack on with them to start with, um, are two kids books that I don't think I ever actually read as a kid. But I saw these gorgeous editions in the bookshop a couple of weeks ago when I was unpacking the totes. See, this is the bad thing about working in a bookshop. When the deliveries come in, you get the first look at what's come in today, and you're like, ooh, and you end up buying half of what's come in on that day. At least I do. So yes, the first two are Ted Hughes, The Iron Man and The Iron Woman. So I don't think I ever read them as a kid. If I did, I don't really remember them very well, um, which may be a damning indictment, but I'm pretty sure I didn't read them as a kid. The cat's looking out the window. Hello, cat. Hello, cat. That's going to be the first one that I read. I'm going to sit with the Iron Man because this is one with gorgeous and it's just lovely and it's a little slim thing. And then I'm going to follow up with the Iron Woman. The next one that I'm definitely going to dig into because I've had it on my shelf for far too long. And now that it's up for the Ted Hughes Poetry Award, it's one that I definitely have to get around to doing. And that is Luke Kennard's Kane. Now I have read a couple of Luke Kane's poetry collections. When I was studying at uni, I read the Hotel Migraine and the Harbour Bee on the movie or the movie Bee on the... I get the names again really bad at names but i read those two when i was at uni and i loved them and this one is meant to be really really good and inventive and it's beautiful it's this lovely thin hardback and then you've got the central poem is this lovely formatted one and i am a sucker for he just wants his his minute in the spotlight as she says, the year is 2016 and Luke Kennard finds himself estranged from his family, his publisher and his faith. With the help of his community psychiatric nurse, who claims to be the living embodiment of Cain, the first murderer, the poet changes his name to Father Kay and searches for answers in his childhood, in poetry, in alcohol and in a notorious long-running DVD box set. Trixie, acerbic and laugh out loud funny, Kane is the dazzling new collection from next generation poet Luke Kennard. In a series of animated conversations, Kane provides therapy sessions for the author covering everything from interfaith dialogue and genealogy to zombies. Kane's central Greetings, Libby. Ah! Kane's central sequence Kane's central sequence of 31 anagram poems re-energizes Genesis 4, 9, 12, demonstrating the mastery of form and trademark surreal humor that has made Kennard one of British poetry's brightest lights. So I'm really intrigued to see how he does this. And the, as I say, if you look at this, it's they're like anagram poems and the formatting is all weird and wonderful. And I'm very excited to try this one out. So I'm gonna sit down with that one on Cozy Reading Night. One that I will briefly mention is one that I'm definitely not planning on like finishing during Cozy Reading Night or anything like that. But that is Sapiens, A Brief History of Humankind by Yuval Noah Harari. Now I've been reading this off and on for a couple of weeks now, but it's definitely a dippy. It's definitely a dippy. So it's essentially just a history of humankind, but Yuval Noah Harari's writing style is so good it's not dry at all i mean i i know nothing about like anthropology or anything like that is anthropology even the right do i mean anthropology i hope i mean anthropology i don't really know anything about that sort of subject matter but he writes it in a way that is accessible he is telling a story it's the story of humankind so yeah i think i'll probably sit down with a couple of chapters of that 
during cosy reading night for a little bit of a non-fiction break. Another little thin book that I've had on my shelf for a while that I've been meaning to get around to and just haven't is this one here, The Helios Disaster by Linda Bostrom Nausgaard. So The Helios Disaster is a mythical tale in which a father gives birth to a 12 year old girl splitting his head in the process. Father and daughter are separated. The girl is placed into foster care and comes under the spell of a Pentecostal movement. When she starts speaking in tongues, she's admitted to a psychiatric ward. All the time she longs to meet her father and eventually they run away together. The question of who the girl and her father are draws nearer, so close that the gods start to long for them. So much that eventually they cause the Helios disaster in order to bring them home. So I'm quite intrigued by this one. It's, as I say, it's just a little slim one, but it sounds fantastical and, and weird and I'm going to give this one a go. A book that I'm really excited to sit down and spend some proper quality time with is one that again is a dippy and I've been reading bits of it here and there since I got it after I found it on Kickstarter and that is the wonderful Nasty Women Anthology. So I'm sure you've heard about this one, but if you haven't, shame on you. It was a Kickstarter crowdfunded anthology of essays by nasty women. And it's just wonderful. So it says on the back, with intolerance and inequality increasingly normalized by the day, it's more important than ever to share real experiences and hold the truth to account in the midst of sensationalism and international political turmoil. Nasty Women is a collection of essays, interviews and accounts on what it is to be a woman in the 21st century. Punk, pressure, politics, people. From working class experience to racial divides in Trump's America, being a child of immigrants to sexual assault, Brexit, pregnancy, contraception, identity, family, finding a voice online, role models and more. So this one I've read bits of and it's just wonderful. If you're... I was gonna say if you're a woman, get it, but you know what, sod it, if you're anybody, get it. Because it's just invaluable and it's just wonderful and... I should say this one's published by the guys at 404 Inc. And 404 Inc is just a small publisher by founded by two girls from Scotland who finished their degrees and thought that not enough publishing was being done of the kind of thing that we needed. So thank you 404 Inc, you're awesome and I'm excited to spend some proper quality time with this one during cosy reading night. So those are the books that I intend to read during cosy reading night. Now I say intend to read because I'm trying to be organized because I've got work between now and cosy reading night. I thought to myself, right, pick your books now, then it's done, film this and stick with them. But if I slip and fall between now and then and buy some more books, I may change my mind, but I'm trying not to. I may swap one of them out for a graphic novel, but I haven't decided yet. So what are you planning on reading for Cozy Reading Night on Sunday the 23rd of April between the hours of 7 and 10 under nice blankets with some nice candles and some nice snacks in front of a fake Netflix fireplace? That fake Netflix fire is my jam. It's so good. I have to get the volume just right though, otherwise the crackling is just too distracting. But it's wonderful. I'd love to know how you guys have been doing your cosy reading nights in the past if you've been joining in. If you haven't, why not? What's wrong with you? Join in this time. It's a lovely, lovely, lovely time. Use the hashtag cosy reading night on Twitter and Instagram. Check out Lauren and the Books channel for more information because she is the mastermind behind it all. And I will see you in my next video, which I don't know what it's gonna be yet.